quite the same. Nope, not the same. You ready? Yep. Join one. You're live. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today, we're gonna be talking about card scrapers and cabinet scrapers. How do you sharpen them? How do you use them? How do you dial them in? And what are some of the differences we can have with them? Uh, so this is going to be, um, there are hundreds of videos on card scrapers on YouTube. And one of the reasons for that is there are thousands of ways to sharpen these. There are thousands of ways to turn a burr. And the way that works for me may or may not work for you. So I'm gonna try and show a couple different methods. Um, but if you don't see that, go and check other videos out. Everyone has a slightly different method. Everyone has something that's slightly different the way they like it. And the more you can play with it and find the method that works for you, um, the better chance that this is actually gonna work. Because once you actually get a card scraper to work and give you a buttery, clean, smooth surface, this is an absolute game changer. It is one of these things that when you get shavings rather than dust, uh, it's amazing. Uh, and it can save you a lot of time um, actually sanding. So we're going to do card scrapers. <laughs> um, yeah, updates of things happening. Uh, there really isn't much and nothing on the bench. Um, I just did. I was like, there's a whole new floor. Oh, yeah, there's a, the, uh, a the floor. I did floor. a uh, um, all new flooring. Oops, out of focus. On focus, there we go. Oh, uh, so we got all new flooring the in the shop. Good thing I don't have um, on tonight. What's that? So it's a good thing I don't have jammies on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the shop is all nice and clean right now. This is kind of uh, special. Hasn't been that way in a long, long time. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a video coming out on Thursday on uh, the flooring because I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, the, the flooring that I chose to go in here. Because uh, up until recently, I've had uh, um, concrete. And you'll notice I'm a lot quieter walking around now. So okay. it's actually kind Are of a you nice thing. darker today? Or are my glasses fuzzy? Uh, it might end up being a little darker. I just, um, I'm using the, I'm actually going straight off the A10 Mini rather than into a separate box. So my, my okay. coloring might be off a little Does bit. Does it look different to you guys? I just <laughs> don't know if it's just me. Um, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm still working on a, a few things with that. I'm always going to be working on things with the live. There's always the next item to clean up and make better. Um, so if I'm a little darker, then I'm um, sorry. I'll try and fix that for next time. What's that? You trumped Mandalorian? I'm actually shocked. Trumped Mandalorian? Matt E. Studios is like, sorry, I'm late, was watching Mandalorian. Mandalorian? Oh, watching, read, uh, yeah, cool. Apparently he's a little behind. <laughs> let it be, let it be. Or just watching it again because or watching it's, it again, yes. it's not like I haven't done that. <laughs> so uh, let's actually talk about what a card scraper is. It looks like a pretty simple thing. It's just a, a piece of card stock. Um, I have quite a few that I've actually made from old saws. And uh, old saws where the handle's bad or the plate is, is bad um, actually make very good card scraper material. You don't want really hard metal. You want something that's ductile, something that's flexible, um, something that is a little bit softer because when you're actually burnishing it, you're going to harden it a little bit. Um, but the, the, the steel is really just a simple spring steel. Um, so I use this old saw that you know, you know, I've nipped, nipped off and I've made a couple uh, scrapers out of this. Um, and I have, I think I have three plates over there that I've taken chunks out of. Um, if I'm ever making card stock scrapers, um, I'll cut them out of this. So if anytime I want to make a very specific profile to match a molding, I'll grab a saw and shape it too and, and make that. Mm. So um, the card scrapers that uh, I use, um, the ones I use are from DFM Toolworks. Uh, this is actually... Uh, he keeps the, the bluing on them. I really like that. Um, and so you can buy them on his site or you can buy his scrapers on my site with the logo um, and the proceeds go to keep wood by right going. Uh, so selfish little plug there. <laughs> um, but if you really want, if you go to my website to buy one of these and I have a link on my website right next to these where you can go and buy them directly from him and save a little bit of money. Um, so if you really want to buy them a little bit cheaper you can, but if you buy them through me, you get the logo on there. So, you know, how much is that worth? <laughs> um, yeah, so let's actually look at the, the card scraper itself. It is a simple piece of steel. And so if you imagine this, if we were to zoom it in, and it'd be the edge of this board. Uh, so it, we want the outside edge to be square on the top and square on the two faces. And then we actually want to turn a burr. What we're going to have on the outside edge of this is we're going to have a hook that hangs over. So imagine if I took my burnishing rod and I pushed this wood down 
and I run it back and forth, and I mushroom that down and I crush it down in. If I crush it down, the only place it can go is out. And so you get these hooks that stick out on either side, and that hook is what will actually gouge into the wood and cut it out. So I'm basically creating a tiny little blade running all the way along the edge of the wood. Now the thing is there are a whole bunch of different ways of making that tiny little edge running all the way along it. And there is no right, there is no wrong, there is no best way to do it. It's one of these things that you just got to experiment with and play with a few things. But the very first thing we need to do is we need to create that edge. We need a good sharp square edge. If this is rounded, if this is worn over, or if it has an old burr that's broken off, uh, you're not going to get a good clean burr off it. We need this to be nice and clean and smooth. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a file. And I grab a medium mill file, um, something that's maybe a little coarser than uh, others. Some people like to make them uh, um, a fine file. Got to clean this one up. I thought about that ahead of time. Um, I'm going to set it down on the bench. Nothing really special here. I'm going to grab, actually let's sharpen up, yeah, let's do this one, I need to do that. This one here, All right. I want to get, Hang on. you're talking that? to that camera. But I am talking to that camera, that sorry. Camera. <laughs> I want to get this true and clean again. So I want to do this very small edge here. I'm going to set it on the, the file, keep it 90 degrees. Now if you want to, you can actually get jigs that hold this and will slide it on there so you slide the file at exactly 90 degrees. I just eyeball it, put my fingers on here. I'm going to do three or four strokes. This one actually going to need a little more. I'm feeling for a nice smooth stroke. Yeah, like that one. That lets me know I got all the way along it. And then I'm going to look at the surface and make sure I have scratch marks running all the way down. And I do. Now, really, that's all you need to do to get a burr. This now has a burr and will scrape the wood. So, actually i got to clamp these down so it will scrape it. Otherwise they just slide on me. And with that simple mount on there, which side did I just scrape? That side. <laughs> I've got a very, very heavy burr. And I've got to put a lot of weight behind this. Let me zoom in and show you what we've got here. Focus, three. And so with this, I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to put a lot of weight behind it. And I'm getting these shavings. And that's what you want. You want these shavings. Because if you're getting sawdust, you know, let me flip it around and use the other side. And this side is dull. And this side, I'm just getting dust, this stuff. That's not what I want. I want to use this side, and I want to get these. And if you're looking for taking off material or digging down through tear out, that's all you need is that file. Four or five passes on there, and you've got a burr that will work. It's a very big, heavy, beefy burr, but it will give you shavings. Now, it won't give you a glass smooth surface. It feels a little bit, a little bit fuzzy. Um, it's just kind of rough. And that's because this burr is very big. It's very rough. It is very coarse. And it will leave coarse marks. Now, the other thing is that this is hard maple. So I'm going to come over here to oak, and it'll probably still work. Oak is pretty good and hard. Let me back this out show you. That was oak. This one's poplar. And it's still, it's working on poplar getting some curls. This is a Peruvian, uh, Filipino mahogany. Very, very soft. Yeah, see? Ah, ah, I'm still getting shavings on it. It's actually pretty good. Still rough feeling. And then this last one over here is a cedar. Um, and that one, yeah, you can see that one I'm getting a lot of dust. Uh, cedar is a very difficult wood to do. Basically, the softer the wood is, the harder it is to get the scraper to work. A really good, hard, smooth wood like maple, you can turn just about any burr and you'll get these really nice clean shavings coming off of this. Feels phenomenal, feels really good. Um, hard woods are very, very easy for card scrapers. Soft woods are incredibly difficult. It's kind of reversed for most things, so um, keep that in mind. But I want to make this a really nice, clean burr. I don't want something that is quite this rough. But what I've got on this is I've got a very smooth, true edge. It's jointed all the way along. 
it's good and flat, but I have a burr sticking off this side and I have a burr sticking off that side. So then I'm going to grab my sharpening plates and where's my screwdriver go. With that, I'm going to pull out my finest plate. I don't need anything heavy on this. And then I'm going to make sure which side did I do so that I can compare it. Yep, that side. Um, I'm actually looking at it and seeing the scratches running down the thin face. I'm going to put it flat on this plate and I'm just going to run it on this. And just a couple passes on that with my fingers at different points is going to remove that burr. Move this over here so you can see what I just did. I'm just going to put my fingers on there, move it across here, and I'm removing that burr. I'm making this a very sharp, square corner. I'll flip it on the other side. Just like that. And with that, we now have a perfectly square edge on this. So imagine this being <laughs> the edge of a board. It's got a 90 degree corner on both sides. And so it's flat, flat, flat. We flattened the top with this, and then we flattened the burr off. Now the problem I have here is that the very top is rough because the last thing to touch it was this file. And I want to get it a little bit cleaner than that. If I want to get a really nice clean burr, I want that to be 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and all perfectly smooth and shiny. So I'm going to set this on here at 90 degrees. And just like I did with the file, I'm going to clean up this face. Now, a lot of people don't like doing this um, because it's easy to roll it one way or the other. But as long as you're careful, it works fine. Now, you can get a jig to do that, or you could just grab a scrap piece of wood, put that scrap piece of wood on there, and then slide the stick up against it. And now, it makes it a lot easier to keep it at that. Um, but if you know me, you know I like to do things the, uh, the easiest freehand way possible. Uh, may not always be the most accurate. Well, maybe not always the easiest way, but freehand. <laughs> now the next problem is, we're doing this, we also made an ever so slight tiny burr this way and a tiny burr this way because we're putting a little bit of down pressure. This is a harder surface than this. And so I could come back here and flatten it out. But that tiny bit of a burr really isn't that big of a deal. I know a lot of people are going to then come back on here and flatten that off again. And you can do that. Um, might as well go do it now that I'm here. But, in, yeah, the, the important thing is that at one point you got it to 90 degrees on all sides and you've flattened it off. It's nice and smooth and clean. Now what we want to do is we want to get that burr all the way on there. Um, and for that, we need something that is harder than the card scraper. And so if you have a good screwdriver, some of the old screwdrivers have been hardened, uh, it will work. Most new modern screwdrivers are not hardened and they will not work. And you will have all sorts of problems trying to figure out why this card scraper won't sharpen because what you're using is softer than the steel you're working on. Here. I'm going to put it in the vise because that's one of the best ways when you're first beginning. And then I'll show you how I generally do it without that. Uh, but first, this is a knife steel. Um, it is a hard piece of steel and I can burnish with that. Works great. The next step up is, uh, oh, I don't have that one anymore. Oh well. Uh, let me grab this. This is a file. And it is just a, a simple file, but what it has is a safe edge on it. Uh, so this face has file work on it, but this edge does not. This edge is perfectly smooth. And I can use this because it is harder than the steel. Files are generally hard. I just want to make sure that it has a safe edge so that I'm running something smooth on there. Most people use a round hardened steel rod and those work great. Uh, what I use is actually a carbide rod. Now, the difference between something that's like a, a 62 hardness and actual carbide rod, there isn't that big a difference. Um, though a lot of people will tell you there is a huge difference, and especially when you talk to turners, um, tungsten carbide is the definite way to go. Now, what I have here is actually an unfinished carbide rod, so it actually has a bit of texture to it. Uh, it's not 
smooth and shiny, it actually has a little bit of a texture. And I like that because it actually grabs the steel. Um, so on my website, I sell the kits where you can make this or you can buy just the rod, make your own handle, um, or you can buy the ferrule as well. Um, but I like this because having the unfinished surface gives it a bit of a grit and allows it to pull the steel away. It makes it very easy to turn a burr. Um, and that's, it was a big thing for me once I found it. It just made everything so much easier. So let's actually come over here and focus this. Any questions right now? We have several. We were waiting for you to take a breath. I don't take breaths. <laughs> so we got 15 <laughs> minutes in, folks. <laughs> let's do one before I jump into this. Um, okay, I'm going to... It's the most recent, but I've had it a couple times. Okay. Um, Bill and others have asked, when would you use a thinner scraper versus a thicker card scraper? Um, flexibility in, in, in use. Some people like a really thin, flexible card scraper. It's easier on the hands. Um, some people like a stiff one because you can get a wider area much easier. And I'll talk about that a little bit when we actually get to the, the function of it. Um, but it's really a personal preference, so it doesn't make that big a difference in its actual function. Um, so let's actually come back over here to the card and I've got my rod and I want to keep my rod at 90 degrees. I don't want to turn it one way or the other. I want to keep it 90 degrees and I'm just going to push it back and forth across the top. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing the steel down so that I get a bit of a burr that hangs off either side. Now if I feel it, I'm starting to feel an ever so slight burr running all the way along this. And it doesn't take that much pressure. Just going to do 10 or so passes. And it's just barely anything you can feel. It's nothing major, just a little tiny bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at this, and I'm going to drop it about 5 degrees. Nothing major, just, just a little bit. And I'm going to start up here, and I want to actually pull it across the blade. But as I do, I'm going to go across. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to end up at the point here. So as I go, just going to do one, two, three. And what that does is it grabs the steel and it pulls it across. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to do one, two, three. And with that, I can feel this really nice burr running all the way along both sides. So let's give this a try. Oop. Uh, yeah, yeah, it should be enough there. So we can put this on here, and with the maple, nope, I may have to clamp those down. Got to hold the pieces in place so they move, don't move around. And let me zoom in on that. There we go. So let's start over here on the maple. Just so you know, we've had a super chat. Oh, really? Okay, uh, just a second here. And with this. Oh, yeah, see, that's what I'm liking. These are very, very wispy shavings as opposed to the ones that came before. They're a lot thicker and heavier. Come over here to the oak. Oh, happiness. Then we can try the uh, uh, poplar. There's the word. Yeah, that's pleasing. Let's try Filipino mahogany. Oh, yeah. And then over, oh, this is also Filipino mahogany. Um, here, let's see if I can just clamp this down with my body weight. Huh, come on. <laughs> what? I'll try it one hand. Do you want me to help you hold that? <laughs> Let me take the time and actually clamp this in place. I just got to run the clamp okay, back out. So while you're doing that, can we oh, recognize yeah, super jet. Tom's? Super chat. Sorry, I'm getting excited because this is really running nicely now. Oops, sorry, wrong button. That one. <laughs> yeah, what do we got? So Tom says, kicks open doors of the White Oak Hall, Knights of the White Oak, fashionably lately, fashionably late, ladies and gentlemen, all hail King James. That's I'm a the way to do it. I'm that Empress Sarah was left out. But anyways, are we ready? Yes. You got a mom okay. joke? Do she have a mom joke? What do you call your mom's angry French sister? Mom's angry French sister. What? A croissant. <sighs> okay, that's a, a good one. I like that one. 
<laughs> That's like the, I think I found two this week. I'm sorry. But this little book you have here is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to delve into that one. <laughs> That's the, uh, the, the Star Trek uh, <laughs> rules of uh, acquisition. Yes. Ringy. Okay, uh, so this last one here, this is cedar. This is an incredibly soft, soft wood. So with this, this is very, very difficult to do, but with this little file here, here, oop, catch there. there we go. I'm still getting beautiful curls. Now the problem with cedar is I dug in, I'm actually putting a lot of pressure into this, trying to get it into the work. And so I actually want to be a little lighter with the, with the cedar. I don't want to be forcing this down into the work. I want to actually let it do the cutting. So, um, yes, that is how I, well, basically how I do it. The one difference is rather than taking the time to put it in the vise, I just take it, I put the corner into the bench, and I sharpen it freehand. That way I'm not worrying about opening and closing a vise, especially if I have something I'm working on. Um, it's pretty easy, whoop, back out, to just put the corner into the bench, bring this over and go. Turned around. And just like that, that's all the sharpening I do after I've squared it up. And so um, being able to you know, put it into the bench and go at it rather than messing around with it, that works great. The problem with it is you have to be very careful. You don't want to put a lot of angle on it. You put too much angle on it and your burr is going to be, rather than sticking out down in just a little bit, it's going to be sticking out a long ways and it could actually be curling all the way back towards the, the, the card itself. Which then brings us to the next step of figuring out how to hold the card scraper. Some people like to push it, some people like to pull it. Completely personal choice. I'm going to show you how to push it because that's how I do it most of the time, but the same methods go both ways. What you want to do is put fingers in the, on the back side, thumbs on your side, and then bend it just a little bit. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. And what you're doing is you're creating a curve. So I'm only cutting with an area that's about that wide on the plate. I'm not cutting the whole way across. And the more you bend it, the more you're cutting with a smaller and smaller and smaller area. So this allows you to detail and do just this spot right here, or I can make it a little bit wider and I can do a much wider area here. Uh, so depending upon how much I do it, I can bend it a long ways and I can focus on just that area there. So if I want to spot clean up um, a little bit of uh, tear out, I can focus on just that one area. Now, if you have a very hard, I mean, where's my thick one? Uh, yeah, this one. This one's a very thick plate. I, I really can't bend it. I can bend it just a little bit. Um, but this one is very good for doing wider areas because I don't have to put much force onto it and it'll do a wider area. Then I've got, uh, where's my thin one? Ah. This one from Bearcat, this one is a lot thinner and I can really bend this one. It's very, very flexible in the hand. And with this one I can detail, but this one also has the curved surface. So if I want to do a really focusing, I can do just that little area and I can just roll it around and pick a different spot. And so each one of these have a different curvature so I can get a different amount that I'm actually scraping out. Um, you got a question? I have several. Ready? Yes. Kenny and Janet Horn asked, when using old saw plates for scrapers, what's the best way to cut them out? Uh, I use tin snips and just slice them up with that. You're going to leave a ragged edge, but then you can come through the file and shape it down exactly what you want. Most of the time, if I'm cutting a card, if I'm cutting a saw plate apart, I'm making something that is shaped, something that has an organic, has a, an edge to it. Uh, like, whoop, drop these. Uh, this is my... Uh, um, scratch stock. Ooh, ha, ha. And <laughs> the scratch stock is a card scraper, but it is a very, very well shaped card scraper so you can match a specific profile. So in this case, I've got this, which used to be a saw here, but I'm cutting this particular profile. So it's like a, a router plane or a molding plane, um, like, it, like a router or a molding plane. Um, but then I can do it with, with just this particular shape. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I will, I'll cut it out with tin snips, get it roughly where I want, and then I'll come into the file and actually shape it to exactly what I want. 
Um, now, one of the most important things when you're using a card scraper is the angle at which you hold it. This, you can spend all the day making the burr perfect and sharpening it up with an inch of its life. But if you're not holding it at the right angle, you're not going to get the right work. And so this is probably the most important thing for most people um, is understanding the, the angle. So what you want to do is put, the, put it on here and hold it up at 90 degrees and move it back and forth. Is it catching anything? No. Then lean it forward a little bit more. But I'm just going to move it a couple degrees and then at some point it just suddenly catches. That's the angle that the burr is designed to cut at. And now, now I'm getting the shavings I want. The problem is a lot of people lean it all the way forward like this and I'm still catching, but basically what I'm doing is I'm dragging the burr on its face rather than letting the burr cut into the wood. And if you pull it down here, you're just going to be bending that burr back and wearing it off. So you actually want to lift it up as high as you can and still be able to cut. So it's not cutting here, not cutting here, and I'm leaning it forward until it catches right there. That's the angle I want to cut at. I don't want to go any farther forward. If I go farther forward, I'm just going to be ruining that edge. So it's very, very important to make sure you know the angle that your burr is at. And that may change a little bit because every time you burnish it, your burnisher may be at a slightly different angle. And every time you put it at a slightly different angle, it's going to have a slightly different cut on there. Um, I know a lot of people who don't angle it at all. They keep this perfectly at 90 degrees. Um, and that gives it a much higher cutting angle. I actually like my cutting angle to be a little bit lower. Uh, I feel that that just it feels better in the hand. Uh, it works pretty well. The other thing is that if you're going to be doing this for a while, your thumbs get very, very hot. It builds up a lot of heat and uh, you really can only use it for a little while. So I have a pile of card scrapers that I use and I'll set one down and I'll use another one. And then when that one's get hot, I'll pick up the other one. Or you can get a refrigerator magnet like this, stick it on the back, put your thumb on that. Um, actually, I sell wood by right um, refrigerator magnets called thumb savers. Um, so if you really want to do that, don't. <laughs> uh, go grab a refrigerator magnet from your refrigerator, stick it on there, and it'll keep your thumbs nice and warm. Uh, now, the other thing is that as long as you sharpen it at 90 degrees on all sides, you now have four cutting edges all the way around it. Oh, and then you actually have eight cutting edges because you can even do it on its end. And so I can stand it up like this. This one's a little bit dull, but still cutting. So I can run on that edge, and that one dulls out. Then I can flip it around, and I can do this edge, and I can flip it around, and I can do this edge. And because I have a wide cutting edge over here, I could cut on this edge over here. I could cut in the middle, or I could cut over on this edge. And you have a lot of possibilities until you have to resharpen it. Um, usually, I'll sharpen all my card scrapers in one go, and I'll set them up there, and I'll use them for a month or two. And eventually, I'll have like, now oh, this one's dull. Oh, no, this one's dull. Oh, I got one spot on this one. I'll use this one. And then that one's dull. And then, oh, I got one spot on this one. I'll use that one. I'm a, I'm a fool for sharpening. Um, so I just prefer to use them over and over again until they are all dull. And then I have to go sharpen them. And I'll just do them all at one go and uh, be back in my merry way. But if I'm just working on cleaning out tear out, then all I'm going to do is have a file on a bench. And when I need to, I'm going to square them up. That one needs a little bit of work. Ooh, that one's bouncing. Hang on, there we go. And just like that, I've got a burr that will work and will get through all the tear out. Um, and so this will do the heavy work that gets me down really, really close to my final finish. And 90% of the time, that's how I'm sharpening. It's only when I really want to get that glass smooth, buttery surface that I'll actually go through with the burnisher and spend some time doing that. So what questions do we have before we jump on to cabinet scrapers? Um, okay, here. I've got lots. So I'm going to figure <laughs> out. Yeah, I want right. to get through cabinet scrapers and uh, what some of the differences and how you set these up, and then we will get into other questions. Okay. Um, okay, hang on. These are probably going to get asked out of order because I'm just trying to... Dottie's fine. So I'm going to go with the one tiny wood shop just put up. Because you're moving on to cabinet scrapers. Blah, 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 blah. Scrapers. How do you sharpen the round card scrapers? Uh, oh, yeah, let me show you that. That's a good one. This one, I haven't opened this one up in a while. I don't use cabinet scrapers quite as much because I'm not generally doing large flat surfaces. 
Um, so I haven't opened that one up in a while. Um, but yeah, let me actually answer that before we move on. So with a rounded card scraper, it's done the exact same way. I will flatten this. Where did that plate go? So I'll do the, the sides, keeping it flat. Um, rather than just moving it straight on this one, I'm actually going to hold it and round it on there. I'll show you what this looks like. And so to get that 90 degree, I'll just shape it on here like this. And if I'm doing the inside here where I can't, I can't get inside, um, then I might come in with like a 1000 grit sandpaper on a dowel. Uh, but most of the time, at that point, I'm really not worrying about it too much uh, because I'm usually going to come in with something else. And if this isn't quite perfectly smooth, then yeah, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to flatten it and sharpen it the exact same way. And then I'm going to grab the burnisher and I'm going to do it the exact same way. So in this case, I'll hold it on here and I'm just going to keep it at 90 degrees and then I'll drag it out and I'll turn around. And now you should have an edge that works. Yeah, look at that. And so it's the exact same thing on the inside here. I'm going to hold it on here and 90 degrees. And then I want to drag it out. And then I want to turn it around and drag it out. And then if I had a profile to do that on the inside, I could then scrape with that. Um, so it's the exact same method. It's just you're, you're having to be a little more careful with how you round it. Um, and that's where putting it in the vise can make it a lot easier because then you're not having to try and balance both. You're just focusing on balancing the one. So yes, um, but rounded are the exact same way. Just take a little more practice and skill. So cabinet scrapers. Um, a cabinet scraper is just a jig to hold a card scraper. So I've got that one. And I've got my 12, and they're basically the exact same thing. The only difference is that the 12 actually has um, an adjustment, so I can adjust the angle that is cutting. It also has a larger sole, whereas the Stanley 80 um, is a little bit smaller sole, and I can't adjust the angle. But this one's really, really simple. Um, you can, well, the price on these has gone up a little bit. However, you can buy um, Kuntz makes a new one. It's all green, um, and they are... Um, I want to say like 40 bucks, although I haven't looked at them in a while. Um, and they're, they're, they're great. They work really well. There's nothing to these, so there's nothing really special to them. Um, you really can't mess them up. They're, buying a cheap one is actually a really good thing. Is that a super chat? It is a welcome to friends by the right. New ah, thanks Brandon for coming to remember. Yay. Someone click that join button. <laughs> um, so, all it is is a card scraper that's in this. And for a while, I actually took one of my card scrapers and I put it in there on edge. See if I got to open it up a little bit. Like that. And locked it down. And I just sharpened this edge of the card scraper. And that actually works really well. The only thing is, with, the, with this, I'm not limited by my thumb strength. So I can actually get a stiffer, heavier plate. <clears throat> and so most cabinet scrapers are a much thicker plate. The one big difference that really throws people off, let me see if I can get this in focus, is that this is at a 45 degree. It's not a 90 degree on the edge. But that doesn't mean it's any different. That just means it's at 45 degrees, not 90 degrees. And 45 degrees means this sharp edge is far easier to turn a burr than just the simple 90 degrees. <clears throat> so because it's in there, the ability to take it out, flip it around, and put it back in is gone. However, that means that when I do need to sharpen it, I can do it very quickly. And usually there's an edge on this side and an edge on this side, so I can put it in this way. And then when that's good, all, I can flip it around, put it in the other way, and then I'll pull it out and resharpen it. So to do these, rather than holding it at 90, oops, not that. Where did this plate go? There it is. Rather than holding it at 90 degrees to the plate, <coughs> sorry. Got some junk in my throat. Rather than holding it at 90 degrees the plate, I'm going to hold it at 45 degrees. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're really fuzzy. Yes, I am. Ah, better. So I'm going to hold it at 45 degrees. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not looking for anything special. There's nothing specific about the degree. It can be anything you want. 45 degrees is just easy to cut. 
And so we're going to do 45 degrees here. And I want to make sure that I'm getting scratch marks all the way across. I'm missing a little bit here in the middle. And usually I have it over at my sharpening station so this is not in, not loose and moving around. And I've got to do a little more here in the middle. I actually do it a slight skew. This will allow me to get a little more pressure here in the middle. There we go. Now you've got scratches going all the way across. And then I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to get rid of that burr. So now this is at 45 degrees. I've got a nice sharp edge here all the way across. So it's, it's basically a cutting edge, but we're not going to use it like that. We're going to turn a burr on there. And where did my burnisher go? There it is. So in this case, I'm going to keep it this at 90 degrees. And that's going to force this burr to curl that way. I don't need to worry about any curl coming this way because I'm only working on this cutting edge. So the 45 degrees is on this edge. I'm going to hold this. I'm just going to run a few passes on here, force that burr up and over, just a little more. I'm actually going to do a drag out, so starting close and pulling it away as I move across the iron. There we go. I've got a burr running all the way across that edge. So now when we put it into the cabinet scraper, we put it flat on the work. I'm going to make sure I've got that sharp edge in there. The 45 degrees is on this outside. This is the front edge of the plane. This is the back edge of the plane. The iron is actually leaning forward. I'm going to <clears throat> keep the bed flat on the work. I'm going to push the iron until it sits flat on the bed, on, the, on the, the, the work. Tighten this one up. Tighten this one up. And then this screw back here, because right now it won't cut anything. Yeah, no, it won't cut anything. It's just sitting flat on the work. This screw on the back is basically the thumbs pushing forward. <clears throat> the more I tighten this, the more it's going to push forward, the more it's going to engage with the work and the deeper the cut I get. So I'm just going to turn it a little ways until it starts to engage. Ooh, there we're getting a little bit. And now I'm not getting many wisps. This is poplar. I think I have a little bit of junk on the edge. Where to put the wrong edge in? I think I put the wrong edge in. You try the oak. Oak is a little bit easier for it. Oh, that's why. <laughs> All the boards are different heights, so it'll be riding on one and not the other. Uh, let me bring it over here. So this one is actually open. Let's engage it a little bit more. There we go. I have to keep it away from this one so it's not lifting up onto that board. And now I'm getting more of that, but it's not quite as much as I would like. I'm getting more, I'm getting wisps, but I'm also getting a lot of dust. And so that usually means the edge could take a little bit more work. So let me clean this up a little bit and see. Oh, I did put the wrong edge in there. Yeah. Let me just do a quick burnish on this. Put that back in. Helps to keep track of it. That's why you usually do both edges at once rather than trying to rush through it. A little bit more. No. Why am I having issues? Why don't you give me a question while I think this one through? <clears throat> Let's see. Michael Curry asks, speaking of scrapers, do you use or have used the Stanley um, question mark, the 112 scraper plane question mark, and do you have any opinion and or tips? Um, the 112, I don't know. Uh, this is a Stanley 12. Let's see, is that one on there? No, that one's on. Um, I don't know what the 112 is. I'd have to look at that. Um, there are a lot of scrapers are actually designed for um, flooring, woodwork, and um, you'll get some that have long handles so that you can actually stand up and scrape rather than being down on your knees and hands and knees. So I'm just going to sharpen this one up, make sure you do it right and actually focus on it. 
Make sure I get good scratches all the way across. Yeah, let's actually do it the way I like to do it. Normally just keep it in these over my bench. <laughs> I can't win. <laughs> What's another question? You're just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. Hey. <laughs> you sure you don't have it in the wrong way? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the, the top now. Um, there we go. Just a little more. I don't think you addressed this one, but I'm going to ask it. Go. Okay. Yep, what you got? Brandon Chanel asks, are the DFM card scrapers harder to sharpen than others? I have had trouble sharpening them correctly. Can't get a good burr on them. Only a small one that doesn't last long. Um, you know, I've heard a couple people say that they, they find them harder to sharpen, and I found other people say that they're easier to sharpen. So I really think it's a personal thing um, because there are so many different ways to sharpen. Uh, it's one of those things where it may be easier for one, it may be harder for another. Um, I have not seen any difference, um, but I've never done an, an actual Rockwell test to see if one's harder than the other. Um, but yeah, I have not noticed that, but I've, I've heard other people say it, so it could very well be. So they're telling me in the chat that the Stanley 112 looks like a number four, but has a scraper blade and... Ah, uh, yes, yes, does yes. Does that clarify? Okay. Uh, no, I've never actually used one, um, but it goes the exact same way. It's just rather than holding it side by side, you hold it like a plane, um, but it's the exact same thing, exact same setup, exact same function, just a different way to hold it. So, why are you not engaging? I wonder if I turned the burr a little too far. I may have done that. Because this one is a little lower angle than I like to cut. Let me just see, if I can hold it by hand, Okay, so it is the angle. So I turned, <clears throat> so here's the problem that I had, is I turned the burr um, a little bit too far, or yeah, a little bit too far. So what happens then is that this is angled a little farther down. Let me flip it back around this way in my brain. I didn't turn it far enough. I didn't put the burr far enough down. So what's happening is this is at a lower angle, which is making it engage earlier. Uh, so it's not actually getting that curl I want. So if I hold it here, I can actually get the curl that I'm looking for, but I'm holding it at a higher angle than this does. So that means I need to address this and get it down. And I am slightly stubborn, so we'll do this. So what's the next question? Did you just say you're slightly stubborn? I am slightly stubborn. <laughs> Your picture's in the dictionary. <laughs> I love you too, babe. What's the next question? Uh, let's see. I was waiting for you to say that I, mine was right next to yours. Um, Rob W. said... <sighs> nope. Oh, hang on. Would that be... Okay, I think back when you were doing your other card scraper... Rob, Claire, if you're still on, let me know if I screwed this question up. Would that be the same as sharpening a new one fresh out of the box? So if you have a brand new one out of the box, do you have to sharpen them any differently? A or? brand new car scraper? I'm assuming. Nope. It's been a while since the question got nope. thrown up. Nope, exactly the same thing. Um, no difference. Okay, now let's try this one more time. Since I did not push it down as far this time, not even engaging. Oh, it helped to set the iron all the way down, not stopping it short. Want to make sure that the iron goes all the way down to the wood. This one's going to make a fool out of me yet. Not too hard to do, though. <laughs> Your words. What is going on here? <laughs> Why is that not engaging? <laughs> so Alan super chatted and he's calling you out for saying the slightly stubborn comment and then funds for Sarah's hot cocoa addiction <laughs> <laughs> what's the next question I have a mom joke thank you oh yeah mom joke oh yeah mom joke. Mm -hmm. 
All right. That. I'm not sure how well. Oh. I like what? Did you? Why'd you break? No, my. My screw doesn't stick out. Well, that could be a problem. So you don't have a screw loose? Yeah, uh, my, my thumb screw. I haven't used this one in a while, so I don't know you if I reassembled it wrong. My thumb screw just barely touches on the other side. It just doesn't stick out much at all. So it is not really bending the plate at all. And that could very well be the problem. Because um, this screw usually has about a quarter inch of thrust. You only end up using a 16th to an eighth inch Right now, I've got like maybe a 30 second, maybe at most. Uh, so here, let me try it with my 12. What's the next question while I work on this? Let's see where it's at. But first, a mom joke. All right, Alan. I hope you like this one. See, this one's working right. All right, ready? Yes. Lance is an uncommon name nowadays, but in medieval times, people were called Lance a lot. Oh. <laughs> Those are the only two I found this week. <laughs> yeah, I've got to figure out if I put the wrong screw back in here at some point, which is what it looks like. I bet I did that. Because that one doesn't go far enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now we've had two more super chats. Oh, okay. So, don't, ugh. Yeah, no, I'm maybe. saying, okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, super chats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron says Wood River makes a scrap cabinet scraper. I'm all set. Mm -hmm. And very good one. SJ LaRue says pitching in five dollars for a space heater for Sarah. I said it's so cold down here. <laughs> all right. Yeah, sometimes in our shop as our house right now is at like 63, 64, but the shop is often at like 55. Yeah. And when you're just sitting here answering chat questions, it feels good to the one who's working. Yeah. Okay, well, tonight, next week's show, the swap. <laughs> All right, What's so we're going to the rules of acquisition. <laughs> okay, number 94. Females and finances don't mix. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Wise, wide words, words from a Ferengi. <laughs> and then number 97. Enough is never enough. And if that is ever a motto for James... <laughs> That is a motto. Okay, I'm moving on to other jokes for next time. <laughs> so, yeah, the, my number 12 is actually set up. And uh, Hi. let's see how that works. A lot better. Oop, except for I'm skipping them. I can do this small area over here where it's at the right height. What? what are you... This is working a lot. Oh, <laughs> the handle is hitting the heart hold fast. <laughs> it keeps skipping every time it goes by here. <laughs> there we go. And so now I'm getting these curls coming out of here. And that's what I'm wanting. So this is what a cabinet scraper is designed for doing large flat areas. So if I'm doing a big area that I need to do a lot of scraping on, this is a lot easier because you're not bending your thumbs. You're not worrying about the angle. It's just set up on here and you can go. Especially with the number 12, where you can adjust the angle and pivot the bed up and down to get what you want. With an 80, you have to uh, work at the whims of the bed as long as your screw is the right length. <laughs> Somewhere around here, I had like three or four tools as a part of my bench, and I was like, oh, this thumb screw will work there. It's the exact same one, isn't it? <sighs> Until it comes to a live. Yeah. I, I honestly, though, I do not use cabinet scrapers much. Um, no, you're always got your card scraper out. No, I I find that the 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 for you know tabletops and things like that, I like card scrapers a little more. The one big downside to them is they heat up, but that's why I have a whole pile of them and I'll have them set out around the, the table and I'll have this one and I'll work that it gets hot and then I'll pick up this one and I'll work with that one. I just find this to be a little bit more rewarding to be able to grab this and make sure I've got the sharp edge that I just did. I think it was this one. No, it was not that one. It was that one. No, it was not that one. Hey, there's the edge. <laughs> and that's, that's usually the way it works, is I'll have four or five card scrapers out. Oh, no, that edge isn't good. No, no, that isn't good. Oh, this one catches. That's the edge I'm looking for. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What's next? 
Well, Aaron from Super Chat again said, oh, sorry for the chat, James. Won't happen again. We're <laughs> 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 just keeping it real, folks. Thank you, Aaron. Keeping it real. All right. Ready? What do you call a man with six fingers? What? Four fingers short. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the next question? Oh, I don't even know. Okay. I don't even know where we are in the chat. So let's go over the questions. Let's see. Uh, Kenny and Janet Horn asks, when you are pulling the bird, do you keep the burnishing rod perpendicular to the card or tilted down? I, um, I like to, to put pressure and keep it 90 degrees perpendicular to it for several strokes just to develop the burr. And then I will pull the burr at like five degrees, just a little bit on both sides. Um, so five degrees this side, flip the card around, five degrees on the other side. And on that one, I will pull the burr. Whereas when I'm keeping it 90 degrees, I'll just go flat and I won't actually pull it. Um, but that's just my method. There are other people who will do it completely differently. So um, if that doesn't work for you, try something different. There is no wrong way to sharpen a, uh, a card scraper as long as it works for you. What's next? I got like seven or eight questions. So I'm going to try to Let's see what we can get. Get through them. Um, Jonathan Haney asks, can I get a tungsten carbide rod at the hardware store? Probably not. Um, these are very expensive to buy. Um, even when I buy them as a, uh, a wholesaler and I buy a ton of them, um, they're still very expensive. Um, because most of the time, the, the companies that make these are actually making them as blanks so that people can cut um, um, carbide bits for CNC mills. Um, and so that's usually where you can get, I do know a lot of people who will actually use broken CNC mills uh, and actually use those. Um, that works great. But I have never seen a hardware store that has tungsten carbide on anything other than like the tips of router bits and saw blades. So yeah, I would not know of one where you can buy just the rod. But if you want it, I sell it on my website. You can buy just the rod. Comes like this. <laughs> that looks like just the rod. <laughs> What's next? S. J. Larue says, um, "Oh, hello." On a side note, how did you how do you get glue off of a card scraper? I accidentally got glue on it. Now I can't get it off. Type on three. Um, you know, actually, I have this one. Mm, oh, this one. This one has um, glue on it. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's schmooze here and there, and uh, there's some right here behind the edge. Really don't care about them. I don't mess with them because um, they don't affect sharpening or use. Now, if they got right up on the edge, then I would, I would clean them off. Um, probably the easiest way would be to get a, a coarse stone. So when I'm doing the, the sharpening, rather than using the extra fine, I'll use a coarse stone and just grind it off. Um, but, I mean, you could always use a card scraper and scrape them off with that. You're probably my, probably the quickest way to do that. I mean, or grab a chisel and take it off. Um, yeah, you're probably going to dull one or the other, but that's why we have sharpening stuff. <laughs> so yeah, my, I would say scrape. Okay. Let's see. Five question sheets. Not to, oh, we, we talked about angles, right? Already? Yes. Okay. What um, angle to hold the card scraper at? Andrew Seymour asks, is the cabinet scraper mouth size important? Not really, um, because the what happens is with a normal blade, as it's cutting through, you have an acute angle that it's cutting. And so because of that, the wood in front of the cut can actually get lifted up like a pry bar picking it up. And that will cause it to split along the grain. And so that's why if you're going against the grain, those fibers will want to split ahead of the cut. When you are running with a scraper, it's actually at an obtuse angle. So you're cutting like this. And so it's actually compressing that grain and pushing it down into place. So you don't have to worry about splitting out ahead. So you don't need a mouth um, to be really tight on a cabinet scraper. And actually, most of the time you want it to be pretty big. Um, I think mine's are like, you know, uh, it's almost a quarter inch. That's this one. That one's well more than a quarter inch. Um, you don't need a tight mouth. Here. What's next? 
Um, John Day just super chatted. Oh, thanks, John. So let's see. I didn't see a question from John, so I was just making sure. Um, I'm going to ask a question, then I'm going to find a mom joke. Sounds good. Um, Brandon Chanel asks, James, what kind of grit stone are you using? Uh, this is my extra, f uh, this one's an extra, extra fine. Oh, it is the, the, finest, um, um, the, the finest diamond plate. It ends up being like 1,200 grit, but that doesn't translate to whetstones. If you're using whetstone, you're probably going to want to use something like around uh, 2,000 or more. Um, you don't need much of any aggressiveness. Um, you could probably get by with a thousand grit sandpaper um, on a glass stone, but yeah, it's um, not coarse at all. Okay, John did have a question. I missed it. I'm sorry, ah. John. It was part of it. Any more future build along videos? I, I want to do that. I'm, I'm trying to do um, like a, a long live video on the main channel once uh, every four to six months. Um, I think our last one was in December. Um, was it? I did the mail. Like Maybe that. it was November. So it's probably coming up about time to do another one. Um, trying to find a project that I can do in three to four hours is the, the key thing. Though I do want to do um, a couple build along videos in the live. We haven't done one of those in a little while now. Um, so I'll probably have a project that takes four or five um, episodes to, to complete. I don't think we've done one since Mom's Box. Um, though I would like to do another joinery window. Uh, that was one we did probably about two years ago where you have a window with a whole series of different joints to go together. So we might do that one. Okay, cool. What's his mom joke? Did you hear about the marble statue that left her husband? What? She was tired of being taken for granted. <laughs> you like that one. <laughs> What's the next question? Have okay, time for well, two had, more or so? Okay. Maybe we'll more? get to those two in just a second because a couple people have asked about the bench. We didn't get a chance to do anything because of the floor. No, I, yeah, the, <laughs> there's no update. The last four days, the whole shop has been torn apart to get the floor down. So, But there should be no plans this weekend. Yeah. Maybe we'll get the next video out in the next week or two. Or three. We need to get it done because I have other projects I want to do. <laughs> I don't have the attention span. Very, very long projects. Yet I'm still married now, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the long project. <laughs> uh, let's see. Fly Fish and Chief. Can you put a rounded card, card scraper in a number 80 to make concave surfaces? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, you can do that. Um, I have seen people do that for uh, making a long, fluted um, surface. Uh, but basically, what that is is a, a large. Um, um, scratch stock, there's the word. <laughs> so like this, you'd have a profile that sticks out and you cut that profile. Um, you can do the same thing with this if you want a much larger gradual profile. So yes, you can do that. That's one of the reasons why I have a stock of saw blades that I can make whatever shape I want um, to create something. Usually in that case, I know I keep starting right about when you're start talking. Usually what oh, I'll you're do fine, actually. That was just me playing with the is I'll, I'll shape it roughly with chisels and other things, and then I will use that to come in and really detail out the surface and get it exactly where I want. Um, so that's where a scratch stock really comes in. What's next? So then Fly Fish and Chiefs or, um, said, how about Sarah doing a live on bench build? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a would long live. Wow, look at that glare. Well, this we is awesome. were waiting for when James would end up in the doghouse, and he got it in in the so last So if people minute. want to buy these tools, I'll be dead <laughs> next week, so you can all come by. Sarah will sell them at a great you price. You almost made it. You almost made it through a whole life. I love you, babe. <laughs> One okay. last question? Dennis has a question, and then we're done. Dennis asks, how do I know when to replace a cabinet scraper blade? When is it too short? And where do I buy replacement blades? Uh, when it is too short to fit in there, when it, you, you don't have anything to clamp on, um, that would be a very, very long time. Um, unless you take it to the grinder and really grind at it, your, your cabinet scraper blade should last you the rest of your life. Um, but yeah, I do know some people who have ground them down and they disappear. But as long as you have something to hold on to, it's, it's good to, to work with. So in, basically, in this case, as long as 
the blade still sticks up above this bar, it's still useful. So if it starts going below that bar, then you might want to get a new one. Um, as to where to get them, um, DFM Toolworks, he makes these, um, or at least I thought he was going to make them. I'm going to have to look at that. I think he, I think he sells them. Uh, he's the same guy who sells the, the card scrapers, DFM Toolworks. Um, I think Hawk Tool makes them, I think. But honestly, I don't know. I'd have to go look for that. I, uh, I don't know. If you ever needed to do that. Because um, for the longest time, I actually used a card scraper in my um, cabinet scraper um, until I had, uh, I had uh, a viewer send me this one. This is an actual Stanley Sweetheart. Um, and then DFM Toolworks sent me these two as test samples. Um, so I've never had to go and buy another one. Sorry. <laughs> What's next? All right, I guess that's it. So that's we're done for it. We are at 901. Um, next week is going to be the monthly Q&A. Uh, and then the week after that, I've got something special that's coming up. We might actually be doing a, a live with uh, Rex Kruger, so the two of us being on live and uh, arguing back and forth about the best ways to do things. That should be a really fun one. Um, so yeah. It'll be hard to tell you two apart. <laughs> I got Wait, the no, beard. You got the beard. I got the beard, yes. <laughs> so you, neither of you can lean forward because you'll blind everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get so much trouble. <laughs> so uh, I think that will uh, do it for this live. Um, if you do have any questions that I didn't get to, feel free to send me a message. I will answer as many of those as I can. And I think that'll do it for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.